you can spend hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars trying to figure out what he's giving you. We pay more money than most people. For us, email is a huge place. And if you're not emailing, you're just losing a lot of, lot of money. And what it'll do is it'll cut our acquisition costs down by 30 or 40%, which that's like found money. Um, so forget your desktop, close it. We do birthday emails for re-engagement and give people a gift because people will open email on their birthday. One of y'all said my digital book didn't show up in my box. Uh, younger people click on images um, on their mobile phones. They just hit images like crazy. And you guys aren't spending all that time on your mobile phone. You're setting yourself up for a huge loss. If you find somebody who clicks, mail them like crazy. And we have your media list. And why is that so important? That's like if that's all you walked away from and you paid uh, whatever your investment was here, to me, that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, because you can spend hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars trying to figure out what he's giving you, um, which is what's the media list. It's so important uh, to know the places that work. Because here's the thing, good traffic always makes money. Bad traffic always loses money. So if you have an offer that starts to die, Come up with another offer, another front end. Because once you have a, a good source of traffic, you just you can pump that sucker for the rest of that source being around. If that's Google, if that's Facebook, if it's a, an email drop, if it's a, a banner buy, uh, always look for other things to sell to the traffic. Uh, because good traffic will always be good traffic. I can't stress this, that enough uh, as well. Um, there's been some comments on email. I just wanted to go through, I'll go through that really quickly. Uh, I like Mark Cuban. I heard him on Shark Tank say one time, I lie awake at night trying to figure out how I can kick my own butt. Um, this is what I do a lot in our business. I'm thinking about how can I beat myself. Um, so one of the ways for uh, our company is uh, we go out and we make a lot of media buys that people have trouble competing with us for. And the reason is, is because we pay more money than most people. And the reason we do is because we look to how we can kick our own butt. And for us, email is a huge place. Your data, our company is really a data monetization company. Uh, we leverage our data to the hilt, uh, our back end data, uh, as far as what we're doing with email. Um, and there's a lot I could get into, and I will as we go through here. But I don't know your businesses as well as I, maybe I should come into this event, but email is, is key. When you have if it's a buyer list, if they're not a buyer, I'm going to go through some things we do. Um, you should be looking at your competitors. Roland was talking about this. You can use services for this. I just use it the old fashioned way. I have a spreadsheet. We sign up for separate email accounts. Gmail, Yahoo are separate. Those are the two dominant ones. Probably 65% of our data is probably Gmail um, of all of our advertising. Um, Yahoo would be second. And then you have things after that. So, you want to look at who are your competitors getting, using to get into the inboxes. Because you can, if you hit the inbox of Gmail and Yahoo, you're in the money. Uh, if you don't hit it, I'm going to show you, you're losing a lot of money. And if you're not emailing, you're just losing a lot of, lot of money. Um, who are your competitors using on their uh, shopping cart? You can look at all that type of stuff. Um, here I just talked about it. Um, Ed pulled this up before. And again, uh, there was a comment on our table, is it really that simple? A lot of times the answer is yes. <coughs> Don't try to reinvent success of what you think is going to be successful. Just look at what's working and do it. Um, and that was gold, how Ed showed you. Here's all these subject lines and they're just all stacked up. That data is worth a lot of money to you as you start to launch offers, as you start to launch copy emails. Once you find something that works as well in an email or on a front end ad on Facebook, or an image, you want to try to use that throughout your whole process. If you can get a little bump on your back end on a certain image, a certain copy, you want to pull that back into your media buying. You want to pull that back out to Google. You want to put it on Facebook. You want to test it because a lot of times we'll find things on an email we send out and I go, oh my gosh, that really had a much higher click through rate. I'll go, I'll go test that ad copy on Facebook or somewhere and what it'll do is it'll cut our acquisition costs down by 30 or 40 percent, which that's like found money. Um, all right. The other things I do on email. Um, when do I go off of their list? If I click on their day zero, we call it, or their autoresponder day zero, what happens? If I don't click for 10 days, 20 days, when do they stop emailing me? Um, who else emails me? Are they outsourcing their data? Uh, we use something in our office too, which isn't up here. We have like burner phones. We just go buy prepaid phones and we sign up for you know, our competitors, use the phone numbers, and see who else calls that phone. 
So everything is, we, mark, we track everything that goes on in our competitors' funnels. Um, and you don't want to use your personal cell phone because you'll be getting calls from everybody. I think my competitors sometimes put my personal cell phone <laughs> into these forms because I get called all the time. Um, but uh, we use burner phones. Another note on that is, uh, and I, this might be on another slide, but I don't want to forget it. And I shared this with Ed. In my office, I just went out to Verizon and bought a ton of different types of phones. And they're just all over our office. I've got tablets, iPads, every type of phone you can imagine. Because that is where, uh, as Roland was sharing, 70% of their traffic, about 80, 85% of our traffic now is mobile and tablet. Um, so forget your desktop. Close it. Not that you're, you don't buy traffic on desktop. But if you're not experiencing what it's like to be your user, and we use, uh, I'm going to share later, there's something called cr cross-browser testing we use. But there's things like you'll have a Gmail app on a uh, Samsung X S4 versus an iPhone. It'll act differently, it displays differently, and you want to see the difference on what's happening. We found emails, we're like, holy crap, no wonder that email didn't work because on Gmail, on the iPhone app for Gmail, on the S4, the S5 uh, Gmail app, our image didn't display. Um, this didn't happen. And it's weird how that stuff happens, but you will do an email drop, you're like, oh, that one didn't work. Or you'll run something, and that didn't work. Well, it really wasn't that it didn't work. It's that you didn't understand the actual experience of the user. Um, all right. Here's a recent test we did just on, uh, that didn't really turn out. There we go. I got some of the stats there. Gmail primary versus Gmail promo tab. Uh, split test. We actually ran this three times. I sent me the spreadsheet on it just to a segmented part of our data. And we flip-flopped the data back and forth. But hitting, uh, actually, this is primary. I put it in the wrong column. Uh, we had a 500% open difference when we hit Gmail inbox versus primary, and a 1,000% click difference when we hit Gmail inbox versus primary. Um, promo, I'm sorry. So does it make a difference if you're hitting Gmail primary versus promo? It makes a huge, huge difference in your business. If you're just breaking even, if you're just at a 10, 15% uh, net margin, 5% net margin, um, if you inbox, guess what? That's found cash. And depending on what your business, we have a team of people now in our office that all they do is email. Um, now they can send a lot. We send a lot of email. Um, I don't even know how many. They had a, a conference call because we're testing different ESPs. And the guys, we told them what the number of emails that we're doing. And they're like, you're kind of a big deal. It's kind of a Ron Burgundy thing. Um, if you guys know that movie. I don't know, 80 to 100 emails. Or I don't know how often. I really don't know. That's how detached I've been on some of the aspects of our business. I look at the overall reports. Um, OK, so I just said that. So spend time looking at email. Don't, don't let that uh, get past you, is the bottom line. Uh, here's another thing. We learned this uh, Ryan digital marketer put out about the timer. And I don't know if that's y'all's product or not. But we just did a split test just this last week with that uh, on a segment of our list. And we had 30% more revenue using a timer. So um, part of email, how it works, and, and I'm not a pro. I know a lot about email, but I have a head of email in our office. Um, if you can get it real-time engagement or user engagement in that first day, um, it makes a huge difference in your deliverability. I know I'm talking about media buying, but I really, for whatever reason, needed to stress email to you today as well. But I will get into uh, uh, media buys as well. Um, so anytime I find something that works, again, this goes through everything I'm talking about. I'll bring it back to my initial point of contact with a consumer. So if I rely on email revenue, and if Gmail monitors the engagement of my emails, if I could get a 30% bump in clicks, potentially, on my day zero email, my first email into Gmail, that now means that the potential for all of my email to hit Gmail goes up drastically. I don't know if it's 30% or a lot more. Um, the other thing then I'll do, actually what we're doing with this timer, I don't know what you guys do with uh, re-engagement, but we're, I just emailed our team today as I was putting this together. Um, we do birthday emails for re-engagement and give people a gift, because people will open email on their birthday. They're looking for stuff on their birthday. Um, I don't know why. All I know is that's our highest re-engagement email we sent is birthdays. And once you get a big enough date, it, if, it's, if you have one person's birthday every day, whatever, we've got thousands probably every day, um, that is the best day we've found to actually do re-engagement emails. Well, we're implementing that whole, and I used a timer. That, that's where you actually have a timer in your email, and it's counting down like you're 
access to this product, this offer will uh, expire and it's just running in your email. That's what the timer is. How do you set up a birthday and engagement campaign? Like, where are you using them? Do you just show up and tag them? Or, like, how do you tag them? That's a great question. Um, hey, Jeff, would you repeat the question? How do you figure out uh, to send an email on their birthday? Through our acquisition process, we actually get the birthday. Um, there's probably a way to tie into Facebook, though, to do some type of API where you could scrub your list against Facebook with some type of API and pull all that data yourself, I would imagine. Uh, that's what our, our team does as well. Um, you can use a lot of information out of Facebook that's just open data that you can plug into, and you can find out all types of crazy stuff about your list. Um, but we do, so if you don't have it on your acquisition, although it might be a good idea to get it, because then you might also find that different age people will interact with your page differently. Like uh, I heard one of y'all said, my digital book didn't show up in my box. Um, so you want to know the age of who you're dealing with, because that could also alter the back end process. It could actually, for us, it alters the real time process of what we do, of what we show people. Uh, younger people click on images. Um, on their mobile phones, they just hit images like crazy. We were talking a little bit about that. We've done split tests. Older people don't tend to do it as much, so we're doing more text-based. We use larger text, all right? So if you have an older crowd, you should make sure your fonts are freaking big. Um, I'm getting to that older age now, so I can qualify. Especially in your mobile device. Like, look what it exactly. Looks like there, right? And again, if you're doing email buys, just understand in most cases, mm -hmm. 70 to 80 percent or more of that traffic you're getting is on a mobile device. So if you do all this prep work for this, these email drops you're testing, and all you do is look at your desktop, and you guys aren't spending all that time on your mobile phone, you're setting yourself up for a huge loss. Does that make sense? You're saying 70 percent of media buys are mobile traffic? Email media buys, email media buys that we buy because people receive their emails on their phone. I don't think it matters across industry, honestly. Um, I think it would be the same for your market. It might vary dep depending on age, but honestly, I mean, like I see my parents and friends, and they look at their email on their iPads and on their phones. They don't, they're not on their desktops anymore. Um, and if you're, here's the thing, like with y'all's markets, we took this stand about two, three years ago. I just said, that's just, and it's because I heard the Google uh, CEO talk about it, maybe, maybe that's the first time I heard it, but basically Google stopped development on desktop and looked all mobile and apps and all that. So we took the stance of um, how can we be the first one in our market to really get mobile down and monetize the heck out of it. And we'll be, the, we'll be at the lead of the spends and we'll control that part of the market. Well, here we are a few years later and man, there's been a major shift. Uh, if you don't monitor your traffic, it is like huge with mobile now. And we are, if you were looking at a growth curve, it is straight up right now. Um, All right, so look at what's missing. Uh, the other thing when you um, monitor your, your back end uh, is just looking at your competitors, how the frequency of what they mail. Um, there's another thing I want to get to. Let me go right to this. You've heard of buyers in heat before? Anybody ever heard of that? You can raise your hands. I'm not selling anything. Um, uh, I've learned something called email in heat. Um, same way, like uh, in, in most buying things. You want to give people the opportunity to buy as much as they can on their first interaction with you. We're, we do the same thing. Um, we focus on clickers, not just openers. But when we have a clicker, we hit them hard that first 10 days. Because they're going to engage. We've, I have split tested the heck out of all types of different data. And yes, we do try to build longevity in our list, all those types of things. But I have found, and it makes sense because it's similar to buyers in heat, we call it email in heat, is, I'm sorry if I'm in your way this whole time. Move out of the way. Um, if you find somebody who clicks, mail them like crazy. Um, and I'll go into my uh, email team and I'll say, OK, what are we doing with clickers right now? They're like, oh, we're mailing them twice or three times a day. I'm like, no, let's bump it to five. Let's bump it to six. Um, let's set things. If they click, we get another email right to them right away. Because we found if somebody, if you have the software to do this, if people click on an email and you can get another one in their inbox, within like just seconds, they'll click on that one too. Um, and that could be. Again, multi-channel, you could put them into, uh, Roland was talking about building a community. We focus on that type of thing. So it's not just selling your product. It could be, send, I, I was looking at a, a business model called BarkBox, and Roland says he's on a lot of those as well. But this guy is a really good example to look at about a, a, a community, because he puts together things that dog lovers love. So 
you can be communicating with people quickly. So your first email could be on something that takes them to, uh, we did something last week. Uh, it was like on, we don't have a dog audience, but we did this dog food recall and we had like a half a million to uh, in the first day come to our site, wound up getting like a million people to our site in just a couple days um, on some Facebook post that just went viral. Um, so, I don't know why I shared that, what, sorry, I lost my focus. Uh, let's see. You were, saying, you were saying email them, like if they click on Yeah, email, thank you. Yeah, email them something and you can go to the app, like BuzzSumo, you can email, you can create content, and I'm not going to get into Roland's presentation, we'll, I'm sure go through all of this. You want content that's relevant, you can email it out to them, you want that engagement on your list up. When your user engagement on your email is up, Gmail will let it in. That's not the only determining factor, there's a lot of others I could go into, I could do hours on email. Um, but I know if you get them engaged and you keep them engaged, they're going to stick with you. And when they're engaged, you want to hit them hard. And that might sound bad, but that's uh, the reality. Uh, when you say hit them hard, are you saying just more great content or are you going to have some offers in there too? I would have offers in there too, okay. for sure. And then even when they go to your content, we mix in, or you can make money off AdSense, you can, but we also mix in our offer within content. We'll do content sometimes that will refer back to one of our products as well. It's almost like a review. Um, so that we don't have products like you would have, but similar type of things as well. Uh, email tools, uh, crossbrowsertesting.com, I told you. Email, I think it's email on acid we've been using. Uh, Mailcharts.com is another one, and, and Roland had mentioned another mail company earlier. I wrote it down, I don't recall the name off the top of my head. Um, Mailcharts is kind of cool, we've been using them. You just plug in your competitors, and they send you, it's really nice. I get a weekly email, and I can log in anytime, but they, uh, show you everything that's gone in your competitor's email, every email they've sent, the frequency, what time did they send it. It only costs like uh, $29.99 a month. It's 30 bucks a month. That data alone is worth a lot. And this is where I talk about burner phones. I don't know where I got burner phones, if it's from watching too much 24 Deck Bauer. Um, but you don't want to put your phone number, your real number into a lot of these things. But you buy a phone for 15 bucks that you throw away after they call you a few times and who cares. Um, want $60,000 a day in sales. Is how much are you willing to lose? You can get all the traffic in the world five years from now and go, what the hell am I doing here? 3,000 a day, 30,000 a day, 300,000 a day. Gross doesn't really matter. Are you netting out money? This is like a legal presentation. These are all my disclaimers up front. Don't take money from your business in the beginning. Facts tell, stories sell. Go to your demographic and find out what they want. 